But it's interesting that until you learn about it, until you have it or know someone who has it, it's not really on your radar. I don't think people know that I have alopecia. They probably just think I'm making some sort of statement. So now I get people who are like appalled by my whatever the statement I'm trying to make. Like I walk into um, this elevator a while back and this woman is standing there and she like looks me up and down and she goes, huh. And I was just like, what do you mean, huh? Like, it was just like everything in that one little huh was like, oh, like she shaved her head, she has a tattoo, she's young, she must be like a drug addict, rebel, anarchist. Like, how dare she display herself like this in society? And it just amazes me uh, how quickly it happens to people. You know, you're, you've got hair, you've, you're, you've got eyebrows, eyelashes, and then all of a sudden, a year, and it's all gone. You know, it's just, uh, it's a strange thing, and that's what I just, my wife and I just keep saying, wow, that's it's just so weird, it's just so strange. I will tell you that this condition has um, exa exacerbated my depression like 10,000 fold. And I feel v very guilty about it because I know that it's just cosmetic. There are people that have real illnesses that have um, just are so many more challenges. You know, I could stick on a wig and look normal. Um, you know, I don't like it. Uh, so it's it's not only do you feel depressed, but you feel guilty about being depressed. Every treatment in the world I tried. Yeah, I did injections. I would get 30, 40 at a time. Just standing on my head, I tried using a little hammer thing with needles on it to stimulate the growth of my hair. They rub poison ivy all over my head to see, yeah, like three courses of it to get it, to see if the poison, the reaction would trigger like the hair follicles. I tried acupuncture, herbal teas, um, different topical ointments, steroid injections. I mean, contact sensitization, basically putting acid on my head weekly. They put a new roof on the house because someone said it was, you know, could be allergic reaction to whatever. What I want you to do is I want you to go over your head and hit your head as many times as you can. And he goes, if you can count to a thousand, count to a thousand. And then I would take fresh ginger root and cut it and then put the gin rub the ginger on top of my head. And um, it didn't work. I'm coming up on my six year anniversary of having alopecia and I lost all of my hair, including my eyelashes, eyebrow, body hair, uh, hair on my head within three weeks. To have no warning, to have like your identity taken from you, there's a lot to recover from. So I definitely feel like I'm, I'm at that part of it where I'm, I'm still healing and also learning how to let go and get back to living your life when you've let something consume your life. Uh, last winter, my wife and I were walking up uh, the street over in Morningside Heights, uh, over in, uh, in Manhattan, and a group of kids was standing at the corner. One kid is jumping up and down, pointing at me, laughing, saying, you've got no hair, you've got no hair. I turned around to the kid and told him that I had cancer. He shut up, made the sign of a cross, and then said, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry, man, and backed off. This was not my preference. This was not my choice to to develop this disorder, to have to deal with it, you know, on a daily on a daily basis. But having some understanding or compassion would be uh, slightly warranted. I wanted to work in Montreal. That was my because I figured Montreal, you're anonymous, as opposed to being the secretary in town that has a wig, right? It wasn't enough that I was a good secretary. I had to be the best. I like what I'm doing. I like my job. But uh, there are things that I missed out. You know? Like having a family and stuff like that. And it wasn't necessarily because of the alopecia, but no, it's, it doesn't help. 
odd of the millions of people there are that somebody I know runs into my brother in New York City. And does, some people don't even know I have a twin. It just, it's like that type It freaks of, them out. Yeah, it's bizarre. There's one of two options you have to, you can either mm -hmm. let it defeat you or you can embrace it and move on. And we have chosen to embrace it and move on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we walk into a room and we are remembered. People know who we are, not only as twins or bald twins, um, but individually, you know, we're remembered and you know, it's, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like being unique and I like being remembered and people notice me and people know who I am. It's largely a, a factor of time where you become desensitized to your appearance and people's perception of your appearance. Nobody's going to tell you uh, that everything's going to work out, that you are loved no matter what and people find you super attractive and uh, that you look normal and nobody ever is, is fixated on the absence of this or the absence of that on your face. That's a process that takes that it's taken me a long time to to accept that I don't have to constantly uh, be preoccupied with whether or not somebody's staring at my eyebrows uh, or what they're thinking when when they look at me. In the beginning, I felt like I was just I wasn't really living. I was waiting. I was waiting until my ha hair grew back so that I could start living again. And it was just like I lost so much time just being like, okay. Today is not a real day. It'll be a real day once my hair grows back. And I don't want to look like that anymore. And I want to be able to just live my life regardless of my hair.